You're listening to the Run For Your Lives podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Daphne. And I'm Pake. And this is the Run For Your Lives podcast. This episode, we're doing something a little different, and we're going to be revisiting seasons one through four of Run For Your Lives to go back. And we've, we, we talked about this in the look back special at the end of last season. So we're doing it pretty quickly because, I mean, these are just so much fun to do. We couldn't hold off for too long. <laughs> We're going to go back and officially pick the actual winners of the Riffle Awards, if we're calling it that, for those first four seasons. So it's kind of like a look back, look back special in hindsight. Uh, it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, we talked about doing it, though. It'll, it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. We're looking back at our look back specials, kind of converting them to the new way. Of how we're doing things now. Yeah, because the last two we've done kind of the like awards version where we actually pick like one winner out of our like top fives that it became like nominees. And if those of you who've been listening for, you know, any longer period of time know like our first four seasons, we just kind of did like a top five and then that was it. We just kind of moved on. Here's my five, four, three, two, one for each of us. And then that was it. So I thought it'd be fun to like, so we actually have like a wall of winners like if we were handing out awards for all the seasons it's like well we got to go back and pick who's the actual winner of that award of those categories and i had to do a little tweaking because like we only had like just character in general for those four seasons versus main and side so i had to kind of break up those like top uh, five lists that we did into like main characters and side characters and i've done it all on my own time so daphne has no idea she hasn't gone back and looked so I'm I'm going to break these down here. She might forget some of these that we ended up nominating in a way. <laughs> I'm so excited, though, because to me, this is like going down memory lane and remembering and looking back at some of our really fun moments that we had with yeah. different discussions and episodes. And I mean, I still can't believe we've been doing this for, you know, three years and it's still going strong. But I know we're going to have a hard time with some of the seasons just oh, because yeah. of the caliber of movies that we covered. Oh, right. This is, this is going to be one of the easiest episodes we've done because there's no movie this week. There's not any really like prep. But it's also going to be one of the hardest episodes we've ever done because especially when we get to like season one, because we're going to go in reverse order. Four, three, two, one. The movies that we covered in that first season to really start this thing strong, how the hell are we going to actually pick a winner out of those? I don't know if we will. It's, this could be three or four hours long and we'll never get to an answer. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <sighs> I don't know how that we're going to do it because in my head, I just think back to those movies and <laughs> I just don't know how we're going to come to a consensus, I guess. Yeah, is it's the thing. It's gonna be difficult, and I I feel like I want to avoid throwing it to the audience again already, like we did in yeah. season five. It was it five? Me six? too. I've already forgotten. Six, I don't know. Yeah. What, how many seasons we've done? Time is a construct. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, we've <laughs> done six. In so season like, seven. This is yeah. season seven. So yeah, so in season yeah. six, with that look back, where we you know the the movie of the season we we threw to you guys. I feel like we can't do that again already so soon. Like, we're going to no. have to come up with an answer, but whew, it's going to be difficult. <laughs> it is going to be really hard, but I'm super excited that we're doing this. Yeah. I've been looking forward to it. For sure. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I guess let's get into it because we got a lot of stuff to go through. Because a look back special, we go through one season. We've got to go through four. So four. try to make it you know, a little quicker. Let's not like <laughs> too much. We'll live in uh, memory lane a little bit on some of these, but yeah, but, but try to make it, uh, 
quick uh, as fast as we can. Quickish. So I don't yeah, want this quick-ish. to be five hours long. You guys don't no. want this to be five hours long. <laughs> no. Um, no, I, I, I know you guys <laughs> love us, but you probably don't want to listen to that for five hours. So we're going to do the best that we can. And I really appreciate Paik taking the lead on this and doing the research. But it's kind of funny to come into a blind like this. Right. So yeah. research. I, I just had to go back and re-listen <laughs> to all of our look back specials for the first four seasons and write down what our picks were and stuff, which I guess was kind of work for me because I don't like listening to my own voice and on podcasts. I, so I, ha- I had to do that. So that was <laughs> I know you do not enjoy that mm. at all. So that was rough. So I really appreciate you volunteering to <laughs> to do that, to go to those lengths just mm-hmm. because I know how you feel. Because I feel the same I way. <laughs> yeah, but I have trouble listening to my own voice. I don't really like it. Mm-hmm. So once I've edited the episode, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah. So I guess we should just kick it off with season four. Yeah, let's do that. And I'm going to go kind of in... I did it like seasons one, two, three, four in like a certain order. So it works out because I can just scroll my notes all the way to the bottom and we'll do it in reverse order from my notes. Awesome. Which means we'll start with the threat. Then we'll do side character, main character, episode, and then movie to wrap up each season. So season four, threats. And I'll go through these. These are our top fives each, which come out to about ten. Uh, plus some of them, especially with the main and side characters, I had to kind of decide and split. So then I had to throw some honorable mentions in there to make it to where there's not like two nominees for each category. Uh, okay. So we'll just go through these. Of course, the last ones on the list will be like our number ones. So those might have the best chance of winning, but who knows? Maybe somebody over time has shined more in our memories and we might give them more credit now than we did back then. So we'll see. Yeah. Starting with threat. So the nominees are (laughs) (laughs) the man from Hush, uh, Paul Cerrone from Anaconda. Oh, God. Yeah. Red from Us. The joint kind of character of uh, uh, of, uh, Ellie or Abby from Let the Right One In or Let Me In. The Atrociraptors from Jurassic World Dominion. Oof. Eli Mills from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The Other Mother slash the Beldum from Coraline. The Sexually Transmitted Entity from It Follows. The Giant Furby from Mitchells vs. the Machines. <laughs> or the Therizinosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. Oh, man. Uh- <laughs> oh, goodness. Those are great. I mean, what a list of threatening entities. Hmm. Do you have any or one that sticks at the top of your head? Um, And I just sent you the list. I realized that. <laughs> so I just messaged you the list so you also can pull it up. I didn't think Uh-oh. about that in advance. So that you can okay. look back at these. Um, okay. Of course, you'll get a little spoiler on some of the other ones if you look ahead. But... um. <laughs> I am not going to look ahead. I'm going to scroll to the bottom because I don't want to know. I like this surprises. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more fun this way. Yeah. But then that way, if you need to look back over that list of threats, instead of trying to remember what I said, you have them to look at. You know what? Um, I'm such a visual person that this is perfect. (laughs) This is good. Okay. So... So again, yeah, the ones at the bottom of the list are are our number ones, which would be the giant Furby or the Therizinosaurus. So those Mm -hmm. seem like the most likely to go with. But there's there's a lot of good ones on that list. Yeah. um, The fact that red came in at my number like four is interesting. Probably because that season we had a lot of movies with pretty serious threats. Mm hmm. And going through this list, it's like, oh my god, how do you even, how do you make a selection? But if I'm looking at what really scared the shit out of me, basically, Mm -hmm. it really comes down to two, and they aren't the top two. Okay, interesting. 
One is the sexually transmitted entity from It Follows. All right. And the other one is going to surprise you. Uh, the other mother, the Beldum from Coraline. Okay. Um, Because I had kind of the same idea where I picked two that aren't those top two. Because I was like, I would give it to one of the top two because Giant Furby or Therizinosaurus, like I said, were our number ones. So I'd happily give it to those. But I also kind of did the same thing as I looked at like there's two other ones that in retrospect I like. The first one being Red from Us. And then here's a crossover, which might give it some advantage. It's the other mother is the other one that I like there. So. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> you know, it might help because when I was on Facebook earlier today, there was a woman on Reels that was doing the makeup to turn herself into the other mother. Oh, nice. And so that's fresh on my mind. <laughs> um, super creepy, too. Um, Oh, gosh. Red was good, too. Mm-hmm. They're all really good. And I, I'm i trying to think about, you know, what was completely, like, threatening. Because dinosaurs are always threatening. Yeah. So that's... Oh, it's so hard. Yeah, I don't... Is, and it's only going to get harder as we go back in time, so... I know. Man, are we going to get stuck this much on the first of so many? We got to. <laughs> we, we're going to have to make a decision. Uh huh. Um, given what I said a minute ago, I'm also going to kind of backpedal a little bit. I think red from us for sure for that season. Yeah, dude, I'll, I'll I'll happily go with that. Like. A lot of these could probably go to like three or four different ones, but we've got to make yeah. decisions. So we do. Got, and I like this way of like looking at like take the top two, but then also maybe pick one or two other ones in the list and see if we overlap. That might be a good way to do that too. So yeah, I think red was such a credible threat. And I mean, red was really the main character kind of, because as a child it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So. All right, I'm good with that. Let's do it. It's like, okay. If we got an idea, we agree on something, we'll pull the trigger on it. Cause, All yeah, right. Uh, Sounds good. A lot to get through, but yeah, I think <laughs> Red is definitely <laughs> deserving, so I'm good with going with that. Awesome. All right, which brings us to side character. And I see you're like, I'm not going to look at the list because you'd rather me just read them and you'd be surprised at first. I like being surprised. Uh, so side characters from season four. Then the nominees are. Am I going to do that every time? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, Casey. From Moonfall. Terry oh. from The Gate. <laughs> oh, goodness. Gwen Blake from The Black Phone. Oh. Maisie from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and Dominion. Ramsey from Jurassic World Dominion. Jenny from Monster House. And Elena from Battle Los Angeles. Oh, boy. Okay, that is tough. Because... Mm. Oh my gosh, I love... I mean, you know I love my boy Terry. Uh, I know you do, and you're going to be fighting for Terry. But also, Gwen Blake is... I mean, Gwenny, that girl's got sass and chutzpah for days, right? She totally (laughs) does. And that movie, I know they're making a franchise out of it now. I saw that, yeah. I'm a little concerned. We'll see how it goes. I mean, I, I... I, I loved that movie. And I said, because I remember when we recorded that episode, I had a lot of complaints about it. Mm-hmm. Over time, those have quelled themselves. I think as the longer I've sat with that movie, the more I appreciate it and don't worry about those things as much. Yeah. So, for me, it's between Gwen and Elena from Battle Los Angeles. All right. Now, I loved Casey in Moonfall, like, amazing. And Maisie was fantastic. These are all great characters. They were our top, like, picks from the season. Right, for a reason. So it's like, yeah. (laughs) For a reason. What what are you looking at? What what do you Uh, think? Like I said, Terry and Gwen are the ones that I gravitate towards the most. Which I feel like if we want to, like, make it quick and easy, we've... The crossover is Gwen. Do we make it... Is, 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 Gwen, is it Gwenny? <laughs> I think we go with Gwen. Let's do it. I'm down. 
easy enough. Yeah, because once we get to season one, especially, it's going to be incredibly difficult. Yeah. So <laughs> moving on. I like that. That one was quick, easy. We'll get there. But now the main characters of season okay. four. And the nominees are <laughs> <laughs> Mallory from Bird Box. Mm hmm. Reverend Scott from the Poseidon Adventure. Viago from What We Do in the Shadows. Maddie from Hush. Fenny Blake from The Black Phone. Bert Gummer from Tremors 5 Bloodlines. Grace from Ready or Not. Or Melanie from The Girl with All the Gifts. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I have to tell you that for me, the top two are the top two. Yeah. For me, I mean, Grace and Melanie, I know that you have a, you have a love for Burt Gummer like yeah, it's I have never seen. Burt Gummer. However. He's, he comes up in this list a few more times, or at least one yeah. other time I can think of off the top of my head. So Burt Gummer's around. Mm -hmm. Uh also, I mean, Finny. Do we give the brother sister duo some some love? Uh, those are the other ones we that could. come to me. But, but I mean, yeah, my number one was Melanie for a mm -hmm. reason. Uh, and my number <laughs> one was Grace for a reason. Mm hmm. This is gonna. Be my gut instinct is to to roll with that, saying our number ones were number ones for a reason, and to kind of push everything else out and say, all right, it's the battle of Grace versus Melanie, where are we going to go with that? Oh, if you're good man. with that, that's where my gut, just gut feeling at first, as much as mm -hmm. I want to hold on to a lot of, like, Bert and Finney and Viago, and, like, there's things I would like to hold on to, but I'm willing to just let them go and stick with those top two. Um, these, <laughs> these two characters were just so incredible. And I want to fight for Grace, but I loved Melanie also. Yeah. This is back when we were comparing our lists and not putting. Yeah, there's the not going to be crossovers ones. in those ways. Yeah. So. Right. So I'm sure Melanie was one of my honorable mentions. She had to have been. Yeah. She was probably on my list at the beginning. Yeah. Now I know Melanie was my pick when we did this. But I am leaning way more towards her. So if you're willing to give it to me. <laughs> oh, give it to you. Give mm -hmm. you Melanie and then hold out to fight for someone else later. Maybe, maybe. Of course, you did say, I mean, you're kind of between. I'm more just like, I, I'd I give know, it to Melanie on this. But I love As much as Samara Weaving's Grace was great. Was very great. <laughs> okay, we can go with Melanie. Yes. It's really hard, but I am keeping track of this peg, and I will <laughs> fight. All right. Now, here's the interesting thing, is these last two categories, episode and then movie, the nominees will be the exact same on both of them because we did not differentiate those either. So mm -hmm. we just did movie slash episode as a category. Okay. We can pick two different winners depending on the category, if we even remember much about the episodes when we recorded them it's been long enough especially when we get to season one it's hard to remember exactly those episodes. oh no i know exactly but, what episode is my favorite of that <laughs> season right but uh but yeah so these nominees are the same given some changes some differences in some of these i don't think there's any differential in season four but mm -hmm. but there are some things that are like episodes that aren't movies or the other so okay but for these, I think they're the same list, but they can be two different things because it's two different reasons. So okay. we'll do episode first, focusing on the episode, with the nominees being The Poseidon Adventure, Coraline, Battle Los Angeles, Us, Armageddon, What We Do in the Shadows, Ready or Not, The Girl with All the Gifts, Jurassic World Dominion, and The Mitchells vs. The Machines. <laughs> okay and I'm trying to think like I'm saying like yeah do, I, I like how we've been doing like pick two in your head that mm -hmm. you sit with and then we'll kind of you know see how those line up okay 
So the one, it's so hard because they're all so good for different reasons. I think so I have one, my two and they're going to be surprising to you, I think. But I think yeah, and I think mine are going to surprise <clears throat> you. Okay. At least one of them is. So I'm going to, mine are going to be Ready or Not and the Mitchells versus the Machines. Okay. So we might have something here because I think my two gut instinct are Armageddon. Okay. And the Mitchells versus the Machines. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so here's the thing. I remember the Mitchells versus the Machines being one of the most fun episodes that we did that season. Mm -hmm. Some stand out to me. Like, I'll see the movie name and it'll be like, oh my gosh, the conversation was so much fun. I feel like that's kind of the direction um, that things have gone even after. You know, now that we switched it, like, I really focus on which episodes were more fun to record. I mean, all yeah. episodes are fun, but um, I'm kind of leaning towards Mitchells versus the Machines being... The, the um the episode yeah i like that it was like fun it was just like it was an animated film that we had a lot of laughs and a lot of fun but also there were some really heartfelt moments really like there's a lot of emotional mm -hmm. stuff that we talked about the uh, representation and things in that movie yeah so was, i i'm good with that <laughs> all right yeah it was a great conversation and i had never seen it and so this gave me the opportunity to watch it. Yeah. Perfect. So then the final uh, category for season four, the movie of the season, which the mm -hmm. nominees being the exact same as episode, but I'll go over them again real quickly, just for those listening, if you need a little refresher, the Poseidon adventure, Coraline battle, Los Angeles, us Armageddon, what we do in the shadows, ready or not. Grow with all the gifts, Jurassic World Dominion, and the Mitchells versus the Machines. Now, this yeah. is again episode recording, guests, all that aside. Just the movie on its own. Which movie do you like the most out of that list? Ugh. Okay. And I think I've got my two, but it's hard. It's really hard because there I could interchange them a lot, but just I'm trying to go gut feelings so it doesn't take forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah. Okay. I think I have mine. What did you pick? All right. My two. Got feeling I'm going us and what we do in the shadows. Okay. I have to go with us and ready or not. Okay. So us is the crossover. So us is the crossover. I think that's a good representation of the movies we covered that season. Yeah. And Mitch, Jordan Peele, two for two on best movie of a season now. So uh, if we did. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we're going with we, that? So let's go with it. That works. Jordan Peele coming through again. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Let's see. And it only took us 20 minutes to get to this. Mm -hmm. Not too so, bad. No. <laughs> it only gets harder as we go back. Oh, season three. Man. Here we go. I'm already looking at the season. Three. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> All right. The threat of season three and the nominees are the zombies from Dawn of the Dead 2004. The dragons from Reign of Fire. The Indominus Rex from Jurassic World and Camp Cretaceous. The red eye virus from Mayhem. The White Spikes from The Tomorrow War. The Vampires from 30 Days of Night. The Wendigo from Antlers. Roberta slash Rexy the T-Rex from Jurassic World. Specifically that role. Leslie Vernon from Behind the Mask. The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Or Blue from Jurassic World. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So I think the definite threat for me is the Indominus Rex. 
Okay. For sure. Yeah, that's my my gut, one hundred percent. That creature was intense, so yeah. intense. It's funny because I look at Rexy and Blue as being more of the good guys, right, right, <laughs> than the threat. So, yeah, I. Yeah, I think I have to go with the Indominus Rex. Okay. And I think that's my choice. Where I was going to go, so this will be interesting because, again, gut feeling on two. It's going to go Leslie Vernon, but I know he comes back up as a character as well later. <laughs> it's not really a spoiler because we've covered these before. We've yes, done these we breakdowns have. before, so people remember. Um, or the Wendigo from Antlers just being so unsettling. However, so Indominus wasn't necessarily on my gut feeling, but as soon as you said it, I went, I'd be good with that. So. <laughs> okay. Then I think we go with it. Let's go with it. Not where I, mean, I would have gone immediately on my own, but you didn't have to twist my arm too hard. Uh, <laughs> no, of course not. So we got it. Indominus Rex. Now this next one, not a lot to pick from. Like I said, there was. Even with the uh, honorable mentions, we didn't talk about a lot of side characters in season three. Uh, so there are only four to pick from for the side characters. Your nominees are Kenneth from Dawn of the Dead 2004. Felix from Little Monsters, a.k.a. Darth Vader. <sighs> Fu Yen Cheng from Tremors 4. And Murray or Muri from The Tomorrow War. This is hard. Now, two of them are young children, little boys, and another one, half of the character being when she was a young girl. So there's like some children in this. I know. Mur Muri was very much, I remember, because again, I listened to these to kind of put these together. I think it was one that you picked based off of kind of the co uh, combination of her as an adult and as a child in the uh, movie. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, Felix being the little boy from Little Monsters and Fu Yin being the little boy in Tremors 4. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Kenneth bunch versus a bunch of children. Uh <laughs> I kind of know where I want to go. Mm -hmm. I do, too. But I'm kind of torn between two. Yeah, okay. One is Kenneth. I know he's the only adult versus the children, but he was such a great character. Mm-hmm. And Felix and Little Monsters, I just adore. I mean, who else can save the day with a tractor? His I know. love of tractors saves the day. Uh, <laughs> it's so hard. It's a right? it's a great one. I'm gonna lean more towards Kenneth myself. I'm okay. being Rames, just badass. Uh, yeah, incredible, <laughs> yeah. incredible. Yeah, let's go with Kenneth. That works. Yeah. <laughs> All right, which leads us to main character, which has much more in the nominees because we focused a lot more on the main characters in this season. This will be tough. All right. Main characters and the nominees are Derek Cho from Mayhem. Michelle from 10 Cloverfield Lane. Annabelle from Mama. Norman Babcock from Paranorman. Eloise Turner from Last Night in Soho. Miss Audrey Caroline from Little Monsters. Aaron from Your Next, Owen Grady from Jurassic World, and Leslie Vernon from Behind the Mask: The Rise of Leslie Vernon. <laughs> it's a tough. Okay, one. <laughs> it's incredibly tough, but I think I know who. Okay, I know who I'm going to go with. All I've right, got give two. Me a second. I mean, am I going to be that obvious? I feel like I'm going to be that. I was like, I, I wanted to not be. And then the more I looked at it, I'm like, no, I'm going to be. I mean, Leslie, Leslie Vernon. I let him go as the threat because I knew he was coming back. So should I hold on to that? But also, do I just bend to my whims of celebrity crushes and just know that like two of my favorite people, I mean, Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Lupita Nyong'o are both in this list. Uh, so it's like Michelle or Audrey are really like easy for me to go to. <laughs> well, mine are Eloise Turner from Last Night in Soho. 
And Audrey Caroline from mm-hmm. Little Monsters. Miss Caroline. Bum, bum, bum. You just won your own riffle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're good with that, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Let's go. All with right. <laughs> Oh, no, that was better with the trophy. I know, the trophy is pretty good. Uh, <laughs> oh, so you can see it when I update it, too. That's I can, cool. yeah. Cool, cool. Once <laughs> you read it, once you read it, I look at it mm-hmm. to see. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm a visual person. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so then we get to episode of the season, of season three. Oh, boy. Which, again, are mostly the same as movie, except there is one in here that's not in movie. Because it's not a movie. It's a TV okay. season. Um, <laughs> okay. This is going to be a rough one. I know it. But yeah. Uh, so nominees for episode of season three. The Towering Inferno. 10 Cloverfield Lane. Camp Cretaceous season one. Last Night in Soho. Dawn of the Dead 1978. Paranorman. Little Monsters. Behind the Mask. The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Jurassic World. And Dawn of the Dead, 2004. Ugh. Again, I'm trying to think episode only, not necessarily which movie I like the best, because we'll get to that next. Okay, so I'm going to propose something. And I don't know how you're going to react to it, but I... Okay. Hear me out on it, and then okay, you can okay. make a decision. <laughs> so if I'm thinking about... okay. I know, all the drama. If I'm thinking about what episodes that I really enjoyed and think back to, I have to say that the double dip we did between the Dawns from Mm -hmm. 78 and 2004, it was incredible to get to share my favorite zombie movie and have it be the original Dawn and yours to be 2004. Mm -hmm. and be able to cover those together. If I look at this list and I think about the episodes, that stands out to me. Okay. Because it was a ton of fun to be able to do those. Yeah. So would you want to, like, combine them into, like, one? Mm -hmm. Or... Yeah. It's like, how do you pick one over the other for, like, an episode? You don't. You pick it as a double dip tandem episode yeah. which which seems Except a that little... i know that you're gonna pick no. behind the mask yeah this is a, having two episodes and giving them both and counting them as one seems like it's breaking the rules but also this is our podcast and we decide what the rules are so um it doesn't really matter uh so it's very possible now of course my gut feeling on these episode wise Honestly, I'm going more, uh, yeah, behind the mask. Like you said, just that movie is something very different that I think we had like a really interesting, funny conversation with that. Or we the did. one that is only in this category and will not be in the movies category is Camp Cretaceous. Having Greg on and doing something different, doing a TV show, a TV show, a season there. So that's kind of where I'm at on those, but I, I, I don't mind the idea of that as well. Hmm. So we're kind of not on the same page. Yeah, this one we're not. There's not a like a crossover necessarily. No. Although, again, I, I enjoy what you're saying. But I'm also like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. These other ones, very valid that I, I, I would like to give them to as well. So how do we figure it out? But I also remember that we really had a great conversation about last night in Soho. That was a good one too. An episode. But I also understand where you're coming from with Camp Cretaceous because it is a series and it won't appear in the movies and it was something that was different and we did have a lot of fun talking about it. It's really hard. <laughs> To make a decision on this. Because also, like, Jurassic World is there. and I just love that movie. So, if I'm looking at the episode, though, I I don't know. I don't know how we... I don't know how we reconcile this one. Yeah. uh, 
All right. Even though I don't think you really had to relent too much on the Melanie thing earlier, I think you were pretty on board with that. I'm going to switch this around. I'm going to say, all right, it's a holdout. Because the more I think about it, again, I don't know if I'm really relenting more of like, the more I think about it, I'm like, no, you've got a point. And because we can do what we want. I'm I'm going to side with you on this. Let's do it. Dawn of the Dead, both of them joint together. They get to hold it together. It's kind of a double dip situation. Let's do it. Let's give it to them. I'm good with it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so they both get a little check mark next to them. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something so special that <laughs> our favorite zombie movies are the same movie. But not the same movie. Like, yeah. it was part of that double dip. And it was just, it was really fun to break down the original Dawn with you. Because, yeah. you know, it it's such a special movie to me. And I don't watch it enough. I used to watch it a lot more. There's just, it's special. Mm -hmm. All right. Which then leaves us to movie of the season, which is the same list sans... Camp Cretaceous. So the 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 nine uh, nominees, which again, real quick, go back over them for reference for those listening: The Towering Inferno, Ten Cloverfield Lane, Last Night in Soho, Dawn of the Dead, nineteen seventy eight, Paranorman, Little Monsters, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, Jurassic World, and Dawn of the Dead, two thousand four. I know. Where I'm going with this, my gut feeling is literally my number two and my number one of that season. Why I picked them, I very much was, for a reason, two of my favorite movies. So, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you're going with Behind so it, the Mask in Dawn 2004. Absolutely, yeah. And I think I'm going Last Night in Soho and Jurassic World. Uh -huh. <laughs> so hmm. we knew this was gonna be difficult, okay? Oh yeah. We and knew it's that only gonna get harder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. It's only gonna get harder. Once we get to the real when we get to season one, it's gonna be incredibly difficult. Oh yeah. So I know I'm gonna don't make me regret this. <laughs> I'm gonna let you have Behind the mask. Yes. It's it's just it's such a unique movie. And you know I really love the unique ones. Um I mean we just yeah. did Tucker and Dale this season recently, mm -hmm. just a few episodes ago. And it's one of those that like quality wise, like when you just look at it visually, like how it was filmed, the budget, like the you know, was it great? No. But was it something very unique, something different? I love the comedy and horror aspect. And Behind the Mask is just one that it's nothing like it has been done before. And so, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into season two. And it's just, got, oh, I'm looking at these real quick. It's just going to be harder than the last two, probably even combined. My God. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> the Threats. Of season two. And the nominees are The Crocodile from Lake Placid, The Ass Blasters from Tremors 3, The Infected slash Zombies from Train to Busan, Kong from Kong Skull Island, The Megalodon from The Meg, The Nursula from Monster Hunter, Mothra from Godzilla, King of the Monsters. The Merman from Cabin in the Woods. How did we ever put the Merman <laughs> on there? There were so many from that movie that were terrifying. Uh, the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3. And the Cootie Kids from Cooties. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay. All right. I know where I'm going on this, and it's not out of the ordinary, I guess, looking at what we've got. No, I'm sure it isn't. Okay. 
Because mine, literally, I am taking the top two. They were our number ones for a reason. Spinosaurus being just the big dinosaur bad of the season. And the Cootie Kids, again, being ridiculous and fun and something a little different. <laughs> uh, I knew we were going to get to Cooties. I knew we were going to get to this <laughs> season. And, co- and your love of Cooties uh-huh. was going to reign supreme. Okay. See, I think the infected from Train to Busan were pretty intense. And I also think the Nersilla from Monster Hunter were, oh, oh, man. But I can, I can buy the Spinosaurus and I can buy that one. Yeah. Um, My only issue with that, but it doesn't need to be an issue because there are separate seasons. We don't, we wouldn't have done it this way worrying about other seasons but i'm like we did give indominus rex it's like are we gonna throw this to another giant dinosaur bat are the dinosaurs what reign supreme in these seasons always maybe maybe uh- <laughs> always don't make me regret this i'm gonna let you have the cootie kids all right i'll take it <laughs> Patriot and the Cootie Kids. <laughs> Those Cootie Kids were just so... Uh... <sighs> I just imagine the little girl on the tricycle running around the room. Oh my gosh. So fun. So good. Oh boy. All oh right. gosh. This is going to be bad. This next mm. one, I just have a feeling. Yeah, as we get two side characters. Again, not a lot. Only five to pick from in this category. Side characters of season two. We have Marcus Abbott from A Quiet Place 2. Hank Marlowe from Kong Skull Island. Wade Johnson from Cooties. Steve Hadley from The Cabin in the Woods. Oh and gosh. Song Kwa from The Train to Busan. How do we uh, possibly make a choice? <laughs> How do we uh, possibly make a choice? I don't know. It's like, because I can look like Hank Marlowe, John C. Riley. It's the fucking ants. Um, <laughs> we have Wade Johnson, Rain Wilson, Durio Rio. Uh, <laughs> Steve Hadley and his love for the merman. Uh, Song Hua, just great character. And then I will put it, Marcus, this is a quiet place too. He carries himself a lot more, has a lot more to do, has a bigger arc in the second one for sure. Uh, Man, yeah, it's a tough one because all of them really do have a reason for being there. Um, Yeah. I have my two. I also do. And yeah, okay. I don't know who wants to go first on this. Um, so I'm going to go with Hank Marlowe from Kong Skull Island and Sang Hua from Train to Busan. And me, I'm actually sticking to the top of the list between Hank Marlowe or, or Marcus. Okay, so, so I think If we go Hank with the Marlowe. crossover rule, we got to give it to Hank Marlowe. Uh, yeah. Which, yep, yeah, totally we do go that. with that. A name that I was yelling at my, uh... <laughs> our stereo while driving around yesterday uh, really? which this is this is now it's going to date this because again we record these in advance so people are going to hear this and go god they released that last month yeah um <laughs> but listening to ben and mark covering the monarch legacy of monsters on apple tv and they were talking about kong skull island and they were like who's that guy and the actor and they finally got john c Riley. they couldn't remember his name and i'm sitting there going hank marlow Hank (laughs) Marlowe. You know what's cool is we may have the opportunity to guest on that podcast. Mm -hmm. And if we did, people will know because they would have already heard us on there by now when they're hearing this. Right. I hope we do. I hope we do as well because we do remember names like Hank Marlowe. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Happily give Uh, it to him. He was great. Okay. Here we go. All right, and then main character of season two again, only five to pick from. Short list because that this season our top tens split evenly between main and side characters. I didn't have to pull into the honorable mentions. We just kind of perfectly oh, worked that way. So five and good. five. Uh, just, God, this is gonna be hard. So the nominees for main character of season two: P. Kang from The Wandering Earth, 
Sok Wu from Train to Busan, Lucas from The Impossible, Regan Abbott from A Quiet Place 2, or Ichiro Sarazawa from Godzilla, Godzilla Kingdom Monsters. <laughs> this is so impossible. Yeah. I have to Impossible? Pick you said impossible? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, you said impossible? I, yes, yeah. I'll do that. Um, <laughs> I was more I making a joke Lucas. going into that, but then when I think about it, I'm like, yes, freaking little baby yeah. Tom Holland making me cry on a goddamn podcast. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so good. He was so good. Every once in a while... The impossible gets added back to a streaming service, and mm-hmm. so there are commercials for it, and it just pulls me back into how hard it was to watch that movie, how it fit our theme, but it was still just so much to take in when watching. So I have to go with Lucas. I'm good with that, for sure. <laughs> All right. Oh no. Episode. Here we go again. This will be interesting. And again, there's a situation here where there's one that is in episode that is not in movies. Because when we picked our top 10, it's not that it's not a movie, but it was only picked because of the episode itself. And I know that's why it was. So you'll see when you get there. Um, anyway, okay. the nominees for best episode of season two The Meg, Grabbers, The Wandering Earth. The Happening. <laughs> Train to Busan. Cooties. The oh. Cabin in the Woods. Oh. The Impossible. Kong Skull Island. Oh, and man. A Quiet Place Part 2. This is fucking difficult. I don't know what to do with this. Um... <laughs> ah. Especially, again, because of the top ten format. The further I went down that list... I was like, that one, no, that one, no, that one, no, that one. God damn it. Uh- <laughs> I think the biggest thing that I have learned from us recording this episode is we have covered some pretty incredible movies. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've had some fantastic episodes. I mean, this was the season that we had Derek on. It was way back in season two. Mm-hmm. We need to have him back on. Yes, absolutely. Um. That said, that was a fun episode to record, but, oh my gosh, this is so hard, because I remember the happening making me laugh so hard. I know. (laughs) When that movie, we laughed so much, but I also remember The Cabin in the Woods, The Impossible, Kong Skull Island were three that those episodes stand out to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm looking at, like, the top of the list being, like, yeah, I mean, both are twos and ones for each of us. So, like, those last four. It's like Cabin in the Woods is, again, it's a horror movie with so much uniqueness to it that nothing like that's been done. The Impossible, I mean, just talking about Lucas and that character, but, like, then we kind of, the movie as a whole and what it was. Kong Skull Island for, I really, I I, I enjoy how much you enjoyed it not thinking you would. That's really fun. Um, (laughs) It's true, though. Yeah. I had never seen it, and I didn't want to. (laughs) Like, I had no interest. And and I ended up loving it. It's just... That movie is so good. In every way. (laughs) It's true. These are all... Unique. It's really hard. For it's me hard to, to compare them. Because they're all so different. Yeah. And then Cooties, again, just being one of my favorite movies of all time. But I know. But you, you gave me the Cootie Kids earlier, so I... <laughs> Will you relent now? I'll relent them out of this. But it's still we're still at, like... And even The Happening, it was a lot of fun. And it's not in the movie list. But Okay, lo- look at The Wandering Earth and look at... How we were able to break down a movie that, I mean, it was China's first film 
that was like a blockbuster. And that discussion, I mean, was so good. Which reminds me, we need to do The Wandering Earth okay, 2, because that's, right. that's so out now. I'm looking at these as movies, so, so right. as you mentioned that, yeah. f- let me flip that episode brain and relook at some yeah. of those. Uh, so then out of that, again, I'm still, so The Happening, or, I'm, so out of those top four that I was mentioning, I can cut, as weird as this feels, to cut A Quiet Place in the Cabin in the Woods, because I'm focusing more on them as movies, because The Impossible, again, the emotion of that recording and then kong skull island again like i just said i loved how much that you loved the movie then you didn't think you would uh (laughs) i know right it just yeah it opened me up to a to godzilla more Mm -hmm. and i got more invested as we went along covering all of those movies i kind of want to give it to kong skull island let's go for it i'm (laughs) okay I'm, i'm i'm good with that I mean, okay. I would happily give it to one of those other ones as well. It's hard. So yeah, I feel like if we kind of land on something with gut feeling, just stick it. Stick Let's the flag stick in it and it. move on. Um, so yeah, yeah. Kong's Island is a great choice. Okay. So then now let me go back to movie brain because that's what I was in. I wasn't. Yeah. So again, going back over these, the nominees, <laughs> the happening's not in this one. So the other ones, <laughs> it's not a great movie, but the episode was fun. The episode uh, was a blast. So yeah, so the nominees for best movie of season two, The Meg, Grabbers, The Wandering Earth, Train to Busan, Cooties, The Cabin in the Woods, The Impossible, Kong Skull Island, and A Quiet Place Part Two. Okay, so I'm kind of gravitating towards The Impossible or The Cabin in the Woods. Okay. And see, oh my god, that's so hard. Because, like, yes, both of those. But also, I want to throw Quiet Place 2 in that mix. <sighs> I mean, for different yeah. reasons, they were good. Mm-hmm. And I feel like sometimes we've... Disaster films, we have done... A few. We've done some disaster films, but I feel like we haven't done as many as we could. Mm -hmm. All right. So quick thinking in my brain, doing a little bit of just calculating. Um, I I had to look at them in a different angle real quick in my brain between I'm I'm good with between Cabin in the Woods and Impossible. Okay. And then it's this is a weird like thing to put on them. But rewatchability, the cabin as in much, the woods every yeah, time. As much as the impossible was a great movie and an emotional it gut was. punch, that kind of makes it where like I don't know if I could sit there and watch that movie again. No. Versus if I'm picking what is my favorite movie out of this list, I can sit down and watch the cabin in the woods at any given time and have a blast. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I'm okay with giving it to cabin in the woods because right, that I yeah. mean too. I mean. I know it's movies, so we're not thinking about, oh, well, what did, you know, what was our discussion like? But we did have a great discussion on that one. And Mm -hmm. it was really unique the way all the different monsters that were created for it. Yeah. I mean, just breaking down that whole monster list and the things that we saw. What the hell is Kevin? Yeah, it was great. Um... (laughs) We don't talk about Kevin. That's another movie that we're not covering. Uh. It's real. Kevin's a real problem. <laughs> Why is it like that? Because I think in Sin City, is it Nick Stahl that plays Kevin or Elijah Wood that plays Kevin? I Somebody plays know. Kevin and it's he's mm. bad. He's real bad. <laughs> That's all I can say. All right. So, cool. We got it. Season two. So, yeah, only like a little. We come in under an hour. So we're doing great on time because we are. But now here's the one that's going to be the absolute hardest. And we knew that going in. That's why we saved it for last season one. Uh, Because being season one, we starting the podcast, we had no episodes out. So, of course, the first season, we're going to hit the ground running hard. So, I mean, still to this day, some of the best movies in general, our favorite movies of all time. Of course, we're going to pack season one full of a lot of movies that we know we wanted to talk about. 
and now we have to pit them all against each other and it's going yeah. to be a nightmare. Horrible. It is already. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it. Oh, this is man. a fun episode to do, but it's also really difficult mm-hmm. to make decisions. The threat from season one. Here we go. Your nominees are the giant crab from Love and Monsters. <laughs> Michael Myers from Halloween 2018, before they ruined the character. George or Lizzie? I don't know which one to pick. You can't. You bunched them both together in one point. I don't know if a, you should have been allowed to do that, but you did. From Rampage. <laughs> Clover from Cloverfield. Godzilla from Godzilla. Modair from The Ritual. Bruce. From Jaws. Oh my gosh. The Velociraptors, especially the kitchen raptors from Jurassic Park. Because, I mean, it's really the only raptors we get in that movie. But kind of the the clever girl and her crew. Roberta slash Rexy from Jurassic Park. And the Graboids from Tremors. (laughs) No, I don't think I can make a decision. This is so difficult. Uh Uh-huh. Oh. I mean, again, yes, I'm going to gravitate more towards the end of Mm -hmm. the list. Actually, the more I really look at it, I mean, yeah, Graboids, Tremors, my obsession with everything. Tremors, the Raptors, and Roberta are iconic as but is I, Bruce the shark. Yes, Bruce is. But again, my little, you know, I like to kind of look outside the box and what's the most I know, unique. I what are the most where... unique ones? What's sta- what's what's something that's like not necessarily the big iconic everybody knows, but what do I actually find is the most unique and stands apart from other things and what's been done? Uh, I know where you're going. I know where you're going. And it's either Modair or Clover. Uh, <laughs> the Yotun was terrifying. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a tree with eyes. <laughs> it just <laughs> was the creepiest thing. With an elk body and arm <laughs> antlers. <laughs> oh, it's just so weird. It's horrifying. <laughs> so I play D&D every week and my uh, DM is a, also a huge ritual fan. Um and so we ended up fighting Modair recently on, in D anD D, and it's funny because one of the other players in D anD D had never seen the ritual, didn't know what it was, and so it was like we giving we gave him homework. I was like, Sam, you got to go home and watch this movie. And then like the next week, he came back and he's like, I get it now, and yeah, it's terrifying. Like, <laughs> it is. He's like, I like this as I like. He, it's like I like this as a villain. We had to fight even more now that I've seen the movie. I'm like, oh god. Uh, <laughs> you have such a great DM though because he's amazing. He Jeff's the best. Goes he does all of these creative things like with like spoke and yeah. the scenes are just so good. Yeah. You know that I'm going to like Velociraptors, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am. <sighs> I know that Modair, you are totally behind, huh? It's it's hard not to like really push for it. And not allow any other option. No. Um, oh, well, man. our listeners are going to be like, what on earth were you drinking when you decided some of these decisions that we've made tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with all these lists, we could sit here and pick four or five different ones and be happy with that decision. It's yeah, they're great lists. And there's a lot of great movies and monsters and characters. To where, yeah, it's like we're just kind of maybe we wouldn't even, uh, you know, agree with our decisions if we went back and did this again a year from now. But we wouldn't. I don't think. But we, we would. just, you know, gut instinct, as I said, because we can't sit and, you know, talk about it forever and ever. So we, we can kind of just deciding what we can on the moment we can. Uh, and I have oh. to separate the Michael Myers in the movie from the Michael Myers that attacks me in Dead by Daylight because I have to tell you, when he grabs you off a generator, mm-hmm. no, it's not, no. 
and mores you in front of your friends. Yeah, no, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh mm. boy. So if hmm. you're you're picking Velociraptors over all the others, if that's like where you want to go to. I was looking more classic, and you're looking more unique. So we're coming at it from two different places. We are. Do we want to revisit this and move on to the next category? No, you don't. You want to no. make a decision now. I do. Okay. I'm going to give you Modair. Okay. I was about to go the other way, so I, <laughs> you you bit first. <laughs> oh, don't worry. There's a bigger fight that's well, coming. That I would that's what I was not gonna be say. bending on. It's the same thing. I was going to say, all right, you can have your, your Velociraptors because I'm going to want something later. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. But no, I'm perfectly happy to give it to Modair oh. because oh. It's, it's what it is, man. It's, it's unique. Again, I'm going to call mm -hmm. that back. For those of you who have been listening to us for a long time or are newer, if you haven't seen The Ritual... Go watch The Ritual. It's dark, it's creepy, it's heavy, but it's so good. And it's not that well known. And it's Modair just won the award here. One of the best creature designs in any movie I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> all right. Okay, so bring on the side character. <sighs> it's going to be tough. Super, super, super tough. <laughs> Side characters of season one, and the nominees are Clyde from Love and Monsters, Pest from Attack the Block, Regan Abbott from A Quiet Place, Dr. Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park. Yes, I'm considering him a side character in Jurassic Park. And then also, the, because this is the first movie, and even the second movie, I'm still giving Fred Ward the, the lead. Burt Gummer from Tremors and Tremors 2. Considering him a side character in those movies. It's, he doesn't really take over the reins until the third one. Yeah, and having it's... gone through the whole Tremors experience with you and mm -hmm. watched all of them. Now, this is difficult because I love Pest. Yeah. I mean, um, I like Regan. I like all of these characters. Like Regan, so such much. a place in my heart. I mean, Doctor Ian Malcolm, iconic. But I think again, the gut feeling. The first two, it's like I want to go to Pest or Burt Gummer, and then if I think about it a few more <laughs> seconds, I'm like, it's fucking Burt Gummer. I have to. Um, <laughs> I finally, because yeah. I remember when we recorded these episodes, these first. These first four seasons being like, God, if I could ever meet Michael Gross in my life, it'd be the best day of my life. And now it's happened. I've hugged him. I've had a whole conversation. <laughs> I sat there and had a long conversation with, with Mr. Gross. And it was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tremors Fest was a thing. And we did talk about it on an yes, episode with Levi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And talking about other things is keeping us from having to make a decision. I mean, it's not a hard one for me. I'm going Burt Gummer 100% because I have to. Because you have to. I have to. <laughs> There's no other okay. no other choice for me. Well, I'm going to go with Regan Abbott. Love Regan. She's great. But I'm sticking with Burt Gummer. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get a consensus uh... on this one. I don't. It's Bert. I don't. I mean, each of these characters has something special. I know. They do. But only one of them has critical need-to-know information that he wasn't given. <laughs> <laughs> only one of them takes care of... Well, no. Actually, both of them take care of issues when they break into the wrong goddamn rec room. Shit. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can't. Regan, Regan's great, <laughs> but it's Bert. <laughs> and you can't deviate, I can't, can you? I can't. <laughs> you know, if we select Bert, you're really gonna owe me. I know, but I think <laughs> it's worth it. 
I think it's worth it. <laughs> you do? I think so. I don't know if you'll say that once we get up to movie and episode. <sighs> okay, I'm going to let you have Bert. Okay. You'll make me pay for it, but it will be worth it because because it's Bert. You're going to pay. For <laughs> sure. You can count on it. Oh, great. All right. But I win the day because Bert Gummer gets the award, so we're happy. <laughs> oh, my <goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! An award? Are we going to design riffles? I know. To it's give like, out? yeah. If uh, you know, if, if we do another <laughs> Tremors Fest next year, and Michael Gross is there, I'm going to present him with an actual riffle award that he's going to have no idea what the hell it is. But I'm going to like, you've earned this, man. You've earned this. Um, <laughs> oh man! It's an honor, I promise. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, let's get into another impossible, not decision. A, a, yeah, let's. Yeah, main character from season one, and your nominees are Laurie Strode from Halloween. Again, before they ruined the character, just the twenty eighteen. Um, Max Engel from Krampus, Chief Brody from Jaws. Dr. Ian Malcolm from The Lost World, Jurassic Park. He was in the side character category. He is also in the main category because we covered both of those movies. And he is a main character in The Lost World. Haley from Crawl. And Dr. Apex Predator yeah, all, all day. day. And Dr. Ellie Sattler from Jurassic Park. Uh, okay. Well. Hmm. This one you're not as invested in, are you? I'm not as invested in this one, honestly. I wonder I could go, why. I could go in a lot of places. Um, I'd be more open to a lot of them. I mean, I got, I got, I got a soft spot for the kids, so Max is there for a reason. But like, Laurie Strode, Scream Queen herself, I'm happy with that. Doctor Ian Malcolm again, iconic. Very happy with him. Chief Brody, very iconic. Would be happy with him. So. I'm not as invested because I, not because I don't like any of the characters, but I think I like most all of these so much that like I'd be happy with any of them taking it. So you do have more pull on this one, I think, in that regard. Okay, so I want to my thoughts on this. I want to go with Chief Brody. All right, I'm good with it. I'm good. I don't have to fight on that that? one too much. Good with that. I'm good with it. Yeah. Good. (laughs) <laughs> good we'll give it to him <laughs> okay. ah it wasn't too hard but now we're getting to the last two of the episode in the movie mm-hmm. where you're really gonna let me have it now um yes the episode is incredibly easy for me i know exactly which two i'm looking at them before i even say them and i i know for sure one of them that you're going with all right so the you nominees, do. I you do. You think you know. I do. The episode nominees are Greenland, The Ritual, Black Sheep, Krampus, Love and Monsters, Cloverfield, Jaws, A Quiet Place, Jurassic Park, and Tremors. And again, I'm looking okay. at this as episode, not movie. Right. Trying to remember back to three years ago when we had these conversations. (laughs) Um. (laughs) And what is it? What's one that you think I'm definitely going to go with? Oh, Black Sheep, for sure. (laughs) Because I know, again, listening back to these to put this together and how many times you've talked about it even since then, saying that was the first episode we did that you really felt comfortable and really had a great time and just like laughed the whole time and was just like, Oh, I want to keep doing this for a long time. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was the one that just made me feel like, oh, I can do this, and I was really comfortable. Mm-hmm. So definitely that one, and the other one, Love and Monsters. I like that one too because again, it was a very under the radar movie. Mm-hmm. Most people really didn't pay any attention to it, and we just kind of. I wouldn't say took a risk, but 
just went in on it and said, hey, let's see what we think, and ended up really, really loving it. Oh my gosh, yes. That movie as a whole. I haven't watched it in a while. I feel like I need to go back and watch it again. Because it was a new, I think it was like the first new movie. Yeah. That we covered. Because we did it before Greenland, yeah. Yeah. And then Greenland after. I I can't believe that these movies are that, like we did them three years ago. (laughs) (laughs) It just seems crazy to me that we did. Yeah. So yeah, Uh, those are the two that I think the episodes, because as much as I love Jurassic Park, I didn't feel comfortable in that episode. That episode was hard for me to do. Again, looking at episode brain versus movie brain. Tremors, one of my favorite movies of all time. Again, we've gone over this. I stood by Bert and was willing to die by his side earlier. Um, But it was our first episode ever. We have changed a lot of the format. It was the shortest, one of the shortest we've done just because we really didn't know what we were doing. We hadn't found our footing yet. And that's why we are going to be redoing that at the end of this season. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it because I, yeah. I like our format now. Again, that like you said, that was the first episode we ever recorded. And it just, it felt right as far as us recording together. But the first few episodes, I was so nervous. I remember I had to drink a White Claw to <laughs> calm down mm-hmm. because I was just struggling. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very willing to go on the Black Sheep train here and let that win because, yeah, it's, it's the first comedy movie that fit within our genre that we did. And it really did set a tone for like, oh, we can have ridiculous and really fun conversations aside from just breaking down a movie. So I'm very happy to give it to it. Yeah. Okay, good. (laughs) Yeah, it was like that, though. I mean, that I always go back to that one, because like, like I've said before, it made me that was when I realized I could do this. Because I still wasn't convinced before that. I was still really nervous and really new. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, being a new podcaster is hard. Yeah. You have to build up your confidence in yourself. And at first it can be kind of daunting because you don't believe in yourself. Yeah. You're, for sure. you're yeah. You don't know if it's going to work and. And that was the episode that made me realize, okay, this is great. <laughs> I love this. I want to keep doing it. Yeah. So I love so. that. Give that. <sighs> so we've reached the final category of the entire episode. And the one will that will, without a doubt, I feel be the hardest for us to decide. Yeah, it will. I'm... I'm sure the ritual's on the list and I'm not giving it to you. So don't. <laughs> it's not happening. Well, I mean, it's it's the exact same list from the episodes. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But again, to go back over them, the nominees for best movie. Again, I'm not even thinking about the episodes. Us, our discussions. Just which movie do I love the most out of these? And they are Greenland, The Ritual, Black Sheep, Krampus, Love and Monsters, Cloverfield, Jaws, Quiet Place, Jurassic Park, and Tremors. <sighs> These are some really heavy hitting movies. They are. Um and it there is no question what my love and favorite movie on this list is. Oh yeah. It's it's funny, it should be like, no Jaws, surprise. Jaws and Jurassic Park are the one two punch of the most iconic movies, probably still to this day we've ever covered. Now for yes. me personally, I throw Tremors in equal standing with those movies. Not everybody does. I do. Not everybody right. does. Uh- <laughs> yeah. When we started this podcast, I'd only ever seen the first one. Mm-hmm. And now I've seen them all. Yeah. So. But then again, because going with like this top list, what did I skip over that are in like, the bottom of that list? A Quiet Place. There's a reason it's that low on this list, meaning it was that high in our rankings that season. That was another movie that 
changed everything that the horror genre could be for me. Yeah. That was also, and this is not about episodes, but that was another episode that we did that I f- really started to get my get mm-hmm. my feet under me. I feel like the the second like episodes like six through ten is where I really started feeling good. Yeah, but this is movie, and I can't deviate from <sighs> my favorite. I got it. I, I understand. So. I- I feel like I have to to give it to you, but I'm gonna at least. Pre- but we've talked up this whole episode about how hard this was gonna be, so I have to at least pretend to like be <laughs> aching and and tear. You know, oh god, how do I? So I'm just gonna give. I'm just gonna talk for no reason for a little bit longer, just to give some love to these other movies that aren't gonna win. Um... <laughs> well, we've talked a little bit about Love and Monsters and what yeah. that meant to us. Um... Yeah, Cloverfield. Again, something unique that redefined what a lot of things could be with like a found footage monster movie that really bent a lot of genres together and was something special. Krampus being a great holiday horror comedy that did a lot of new things. I mean, gingerbread men. That's. I know. The when jack in the box think... <laughs> with an unhinged jaw that terrifies you forever. Uh... <laughs> When I think of that movie, I go straight to the gingerbread man. Yeah. <laughs> <Every time. laughs> uh, the ritual, you know how much I love that movie. I just, I mean, I talked earlier, it was like, people go watch it, and I still stand by that. Please go watch it. We didn't really give a lot of love to Greenland. Greenland, again, a newer movie, one of the first newer movies, like new movies that had just come out that we did, that, again, not knowing anything about it, going like, this could go either way, and then really, really enjoying it, really loving it. Yeah. There was a lot that. I really liked the casting was great in it. The effects were good. Yeah. They're on mm-hmm. this list for a reason. Absolutely. But I think once you get to those final ones on the list, like Jaws, A Quiet Place, Jurassic Park, and Tremors, you're getting to incredibly solid movies that, yeah. you know, have a special place in our hearts. Yeah. And then, I mean, and only one of them has incredible practical effects like the animatronics that stand the test of time for 30 plus years that have a cast that just meld together so well tremors and <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, I knew when you were talking about animatronics that you weren't talking about Jaws because the shark did not behave itself. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pake. Yeah, no. I know. Which, I mean, again, what I was saying, I purposely mislead because it applies to both of those movies. Both came out like a year apart from each other. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I figured this would be a lot harder, but... I mean, Jurassic Park is one of the most iconic movies of all time for a reason. Yes, I love Tremors. Will I stand by my love of Tremors till the end of my life? Absolutely. Is it the best movie on this list? Yes. But is it the (laughs) best movie on this list? Well, (laughs) (laughs) no. Jurassic Park. Yeah. I mean, the Steven Spielberg masterpiece. And really, like, you know, I was, I was, I, set it up as a joke to throw in tremors at the end but no for real what i said still is is very clearly true about jurassic park the animatronics the practical effects the cast the story everything melding together jurassic park is perfection <laughs> so is tremors at least it takes place there uh but <laughs> i knew you were going there as soon as <laughs> yeah uh... As soon as you finish saying perfection, yeah, <laughs> I knew where you were going. <laughs> We've been doing this podcast long enough that I know one yeah. of them is in perfection and the other one embodies it. Uh... Yes. <laughs> yeah, thirty years later, if you imagine, you know, for movie to hold up for the dinosaurs, for what Spielberg did with the dinosaurs, I still think he learned a lot when he did Jaws. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but yeah, all these years later, said holding up is as much as technology and filming and everything has grown. 
all these years later, I don't think you can say a single negative thing about Jurassic Park. There's, you can. there's nothing. Um, <laughs> it's incredible. It's a wonderful work of art. Yeah. So it's it's funny we build it up so long. It's like oh, this is gonna be the hardest thing, and then really, whenever if I'm honest with myself and looking at it, it's like you don't have to fight that hard for me to go. Yeah, no, you're right. That's definitely the winner. <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I feel like we did it. We did it. We made it through. So I will go back recap real quick. So we have. The Riffles, officially, every season, every movie we've broken down, there are award winners for the same categories in every season. And so, season one, movie of the season, Jurassic Park. Episode of the season, Black Sheep. Main character, Chief Brody. Side character, Burt Gummer. And threat, Modair. <laughs> I got some good stuff in there myself, too. I'm happy. Season 2, movie of the season, The Cabin in the Woods. Episode, Kong Skull Island. Main character, Lucas from The Impossible. Side character, Hank Marlowe. Threat, the Cootie Kids. <laughs> season 3, movie of the season, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Episode, Dawn of the Dead 1978 and Dawn of the Dead 2004, a double dip special that we're going to allow ourselves to give them the joint <laughs> award. Main character, Miss Audrey Caroline, Little Monsters. Side character, Kenneth from Dawn of the Dead 2004. And the threat, the Indominus Rex. Season 4, movie, uh, uh, movie of the season, Us. Episode, The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Main character, Melanie, the girl with all the gifts. Side character, Gwen Blake, the black phone. And threat, Red from us. That's yeah. a pretty extensive list. I'm glad that we went back and did this. Because I really love what we do now. Mm -hmm. Probably not going to have any feedback for this episode. Speaking of that, there's the... There's a, again... Almost as if it was a push of a button cue. Crazy, right? Uh, so yeah, let me go get that feedback phone. All right, we actually have one little bit of feedback here, which is awesome. Uh, with it being a special, unique kind of episode, is like a, a look back, look back. I wasn't sure what to expect, but somebody awesome came through for mm -hmm. us. Uh, <laughs> from uh, Catherine over on Facebook. So I'm excited about that. Because I did ask whenever I made the post for this earlier this week, of course, uh, you know, what were some of your favorite things that, that, that we've covered? Uh, and so I'll just kind of break these down section by section. She gave us different little sections, which was cool to her own little uh, uh, topic or uh, categories. So that's cool. So I'll go ahead and go through those with Catherine saying favorite movies. She says, I got my list down to a top 10, but got stuck. So I'm going with Deep Blue Sea and Congo. They've been favorites since I was little when my dad and I would watch them on Friday nights while playing Risk. Which is fun. We haven't covered Congo yet. We but haven't. We absolutely should. I think I've. Yes, I'm going to add it to the list. <laughs> yeah, Deep Blue Sea was a fun one, almost like a, a deep cut. And at this <laughs> at this point, because had Greg on for that a, forever ago. It was a lot. Of yeah, fun, I think it was season two. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it, it was a while back. Yeah. She goes on with favorite monsters, the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. I couldn't choose between Rexy, Blue, or the Dilophosaurus, who deserves to be in the running for taking out Nedry. And I know Daphne would agree with you on that one for sure. <laughs> yes, I totally agree. Yeah, Most memorable character, Lucas from The Impossible. I didn't watch the trailer and assumed most of the family didn't survive. So this movie also wins my movie that made me cry the most award. I am right oh, there with you. Man. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> we always go back to the impossible. Absolutely. It's a it's a like, hidden golden gem in all of our movies and episodes that we've done. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. Uh, and then she goes on with saying, some favorite movies that I hadn't seen prior to this podcast and may never have seen if it wasn't for Run For Your Lives. Dante's Peak, Black Sheep, Attack the Block, Trip to Busan, Cooties, and Little Monsters. I also feel like Turkey from Thanksgiving deserves to be mentioned, but can't quite come up with a category for him other than most deranged demonic turkey summoned from a Native American necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Thank you all for the years of entertainment. I'm looking forward to several more. Thank you so much. That's really awesome. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I feel like Catherine took us on memory lane trip. Yeah. It was so good. I feel the same way about Turkey. (laughs) I do. I never call him. I mean, I don't even call the movie Thanksgiving. I just talk about Turkey. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Well, if you would like to submit feedback like Catherine... You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Run For Your Lives Podcast. You can email us, runforyourlivespodcast at gmail.com. If you're enjoying the show, tell your friends. We are available on all the podcast players, including Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. Go to runforyourlivespodcast.com for all the links that you're ever going to need. And give us a review on Apple Podcasts. That is the best way to share the love and get us out there even more. We really appreciate it. We do, absolutely. And of course, speaking about sharing the love, gotta give those shout outs to things going on in the podcast universe around us. Podcastica always busy with lots of fun stuff for people to listen to. Um, Strange Indeed, still on hiatus. Like I said, uh, you know, we're taking a break for the holidays and stuff. So even here now, New Year's is upon us. So, uh, you know, still taking it easy but i'm sure we will come up with something soon uh <laughs> <laughs> hopefully yeah let us know uh over on strange indeed with podcast and stuff reach out if you got some stuff that maybe me and rima should keep our eye on so we're still looking but yep lots of good stuff to check back on that we did finish up the house of usher recently so if you haven't checked that out go check that out uh also good stuff going on podcastica of course the cast of us doing their rewatch of the walking dead This week, Season 2, Episode 2, Bloodletting. So you can go check that out. Also on the Who Watches the Watchers podcast, as they're calling it now, covering What If over on Disney+. Plus. What If Season 2 has had a really interesting release thing where they're actually releasing a new episode every day through the end of the year. So uh, Lenny and Kurt over there are taking it a little differently. They're kind of doing them two episodes at a time every couple of days so they'll be catching up so of course episodes one and two were together and now you can catch episodes three and four out together this week as well so go check those out uh also for the star wars tv cast there is a recent episode you can go check out if you need more star wars goodness from podcastica with the holiday special james jonathan jason penny mark and rima got together to work on that talk about a lot of holiday special stuff there star wars yeah, so over on Revisited, they were going back through Ted Lasso, Ben and Kristen, and so recently they did their Christmas special, which instead of an episode of Ted Lasso, Hannah Waddingham, who's part of the cast, Ted Lasso, of course, released her Home for Christmas Christmas special, her singing and doing a lot of fun stuff, so they decided to go check that out and talk about that, <laughs> which I'm sure. I haven't watched it yet, uh, but I'm sure it's just brilliant, because she is. She uh, is brilliant. <laughs> she is. She is. Of course, the Squid Game cast are working through season one of Squid Game. Episode six, Gangbu is out. Gangbu gang. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not quite that, but, no. but but close. But yes, but Gangbu, where that comes from, if you watch the, uh, the, the, the challenge. But yeah, Jason, David, and Veronica going over that episode of the Korean Squid Game show there. Still slaying your Buffy podcast, Kara and Penny, continuing on with that. This week, season three, episode one, titled Anne, the episode this week they're going through. Uh, Yellow Jackets W2F recently, this past week, released a special little trivia episode. Penny, Jason, and Jenny, along with Daphne right here, decided to put each other's Yellow Jackets knowledge to the test with their own little trivia questions they devised for each other. Uh (laughs) After they've been covering other shows and not even thinking about Yellow Jackets for a while. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have not been focused on Yellow Jackets since about July. So, yeah. Not my <laughs> finest trivia outing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. You didn't know who the bear belonged to? No, uh, no I'm kidding. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. Why was it there? No. No spoilers for things. But yeah, go check it out. I listened to it. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. If they had quizzed me on Squid Game the Challenge, I would have won that. I right, would have aced it. Living in that world. I was living time. in that world. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
And then lastly, on the TV show podcast for Podcastica, of course, House Podcastica in a joint effort with Wilhelm, our friend Ben over there, still going through Monarch Legacy of Monsters, the Apple TV show covering the Godzilla Kong monster verse, kind of the Monarch, the company in the background of everything. It's been a really interesting show. I've really been enjoying it. Uh, me and Daphne should be on there in just a couple weeks. I think we are officially slated to cover the finale. Yes. So excited. With them in like two weeks. So that's going to be really fun. I'm excited to do that. Finally get with Ben and Mark and talk monsters. We good? Yes. <laughs> we love talking monsters. Oh, yeah. We're good at it. I, th- I hope. I think we are. I think you know, 158 yeah. episodes in. Yeah. I, hopefully we're or, yeah. Oh, something like that. 157, <laughs> six, yeah. wherever we're at right now. Hopefully yeah. we'll get at it at that point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, of course, outside of the realm of TV shows, I'm so excited about this one. And I still can't wait to try to be a part of it next year at some yes. point. But welcome to the apocalypse, the kind of improv comedy podcast dealing with just people playing parts, improvising roles in a, an apocalypse setting, just kind of playing off of each other. But, but. Randy goes in and does a lot of great work with the editing and the sound effects and really makes the story something to really like get invested in inside of, even as funny as it is. It's something different for Podcastica and I love it. And I'm so Me glad too. that Randy came up with this idea and that Jason signed off on making it officially part of the network and doing something with it because it's it's so much fun. Uh, I think they're doing it every other week. It's a bi-weekly release is what Randy's yeah. looking at doing. And... Yeah, uh, the episode two is up now with Robbie, the security guard, and it is featuring the voice and improv talents of our good friend Greg, which I just mentioned earlier. He was on Deep Blue Sea with us. So yeah, yeah. you gotta go check that out for sure. I know, I can't wait to listen to it. <laughs> it's so much fun. I wish it came out once a week. Mm-hmm. But I appreciate that Randy takes the extra time Yeah, and releases it bi-weekly just because the production quality is so fantastic yeah it's it's so good i i started listening to it today and then we were recording uh another episode tonight so i got like maybe only five minutes in i was like oh, i'm gonna have to come back to this later uh- <laughs> <laughs> i know but it's I, hard it's so good but yeah so lots of great stuff going on on podcastica but of course you can come back next year and <laughs> but also next week, same thing. And check out what we got going on right here for you at Run For Your Lives. What we doing to kick off 2024? Well, in a dystopian future where... Oh, all 2024 pro- is already dystopian? Damn. Uh, no. <laughs> well, the jury's still out on that. <laughs> we'll see. It is an election year. I won't say anything more than that, but... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in a dystopian future where all crime is legal for one night every year, chaos descends upon society as citizens unleash their most primal instincts. Just last season, we covered The First Purge, which was not the first film in this franchise, (laughs) but timeline-wise, it was. Now we're going to cover the original film that started everything in 2013, the Purge, written and directed by James DeMonico and starring Ethan Hawke and Lena Headey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, The Purge. We're jumping back into that. Uh, be a lot of fun. Definitely a movie I had not seen since 2013 when it came out in theaters and it was a big deal. So it was good to go back and revisit that one. Have a fun yeah. conversation. So, so definitely make sure to check that out next week and give us some thoughts on it if you want to. Because, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I really enjoy this series. I think it's uh, terrifying. It's one of my favorite series after Jurassic series. I really enjoy the Purge films, so I'm always excited to go back to it. And since we've finished with all the Jurassic films, Mm -hmm. it's great to be able to continue with this film franchise. Yeah, for sure. And with that, we have reached the end of another episode Thanks for listening. I'm Daphne. And I'm Pete. And if you have to run, you better run for your lives. Bye-bye.